right. Time for our next big plot development in just a second, once I go through this next door, after fighting all these devils. Or demons, rather. Actually, for these guys, um... Can't dispel them. I have a suspect. Oh, uh, let's try doing a sweep spell for the priest again. Uh, Nope. Okay, I was worth a shot. Ah, I should have used... Okay, I'm going to take some damage from the spell. I should have used... Okay, not that much. That's good. Okay, so Converge attack on you. Spell turns out not so useful, so let's do please cleric spell. So let's do spell cancel on you two. Or rather you two do spell cancel. Um curious about that one. Well, a bunch of extra XP this time, I guess. Nope. Okay. So yeah, they they, can, they block all spells. Okay. Good to know. All right. So. Average attack on you. Spell cancel from you. And you heal. Ahina, and she's taking a lot of damage. Actually, trick shot. You heal Hina because you've been taking a fair amount of damage. Durgan next turn gets this turn gets healed. Alright, so spell cancel from you. And actually let's do the just that use that heal on the fall front row. That's better. And now you're going to advance forward, and, or prance forward, I should say. 
And now you get a converted attack and the assist shot. And I think you survived the uh, assassination. Huh. Okay, that's fine. You're still dead. Three party members leveled up. Okay, that's good. Next crystal room. The last crystal held the emotions of the earth. What does this one hold? What kind of emotions? You and Colgan slowly, Colgan slowly reach for the crystal. My oldest memory is rain. I remember the gentle spring rain soaking my face. A woman told me to rate here. It's a bummer I couldn't get the audio recording to work. That was most likely my mother. My mother kept looking back, waving as she left. My hand is a slice of bread. I waited while nibbling on it, believing my mother's words. Three rating mornings have passed. Bread is running short. Even so, I waited for my mother with my arms around my knees. I hear adults' voices mixed in with the murmur of rain. My, my, another abandoned child. The nearby town's crops are, are dying due to this rain. They can't afford a child. This is, isn't an orphanage. We can only take care of so many. Oh, well, we cannot, let, we cannot just let a child starve to death in front of our monastery. Abandoned, abandoned. Abandoned, abandoned. Abandoned, 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 abandoned. Abandoned! The voice echoed within my head. I ran, trying to escape the voices. I thought I heard someone call me back, but my feet kept on moving. I felt like if I stopped, I would have to accept the fact that I was abandoned. This is Durgan. Your memory? That child looked like you. But you just trembled, holding yourself, without answering Colgan. Your face was pale and lips white. You wanted to turn back, but the waves of memory came from the left and the right and took you in. You have no choice but to go on. The child was running through a small alley. He stops due to the silence. He doesn't know where he came from. If he can't find it, he can't meet, you, meet his mother. The mist began to quail around the child. It slowly took the form of a human. This guy again! What's wrong, young boy? Have you no place to go? No, no place to return? Colgan swallowed his breath. He's... The child shakes his head. Mom told me to wait. So I... So I... Oh, you're waiting for your mother. You are shaking due to the cold. Do you come with me? You can wait there. To young Durgan, the old bishop looked gentle. But in your eyes now... Next to you, Colgan was yelling, Stop it! But the child will take his hand, and... Tears fall from your eyes. Thinking of the fate the child will soon carry. The young Durgan lived in an underground temple with the old bishop. After one year, he understood the bitter fact that he was abandoned. Durgan, do not hate your mother. Your mother had to do so to save herself. But mother would willingly abandon her child. Your anger should only be directed to only one person, Queen Atelier. She is a cold queen who never tried to help the people suffering from the poor crop season. That girl, who just became queen, immediately set up something to handle the situation. This tragedy would never have happened. 
That's bullcrap, says Colgan. Her kind majesty would never abandon her people. She used the Imperial Treasury to try and save the people. At that time, Durgan had no choice but to believe the bishop. It was too hard to hate his mother. As long as she is queen, this tragedy will continue. Durgan, you shall become the sword to strike down the queen. From then on, Durgan learned many different things in order to strike down the queen. All from the style of assassination. Durgan became an assassin for the sole purpose of killing the queen. With each new power learned, he lost a piece of emotion. With each new knowledge gained, he lost part of his ability to think. Eventually, Durgan's eyes became cold as ice. Cold as ice, you're willing to sacrifice your love. And then you came. As a queen's guard, here to take her majesty's life. Hulgan approached you. Being abandoned, that is pitiable. You had no choice but to follow him. But why didn't you realize his words were just lies about her majesty? You waited, just waited, silently for the next wave of memory. The waves take happiness and despair with them. You know that. You thought of the happiness you'll never get back and close your eyes. To the castle. Her Majesty. Durgan, have you grown accustomed to your position as a Queen's Guard? Yes, Your Majesty. That is good to hear. It is reassuring to have new guards. Durgan, you were here all this time? You like the view from here, don't you? What are you thinking? What are you feeling when you look at the town? Or are you reminiscing? Was it being too nosy? If so, I'm sorry. I just wanted to know more about you. You don't open up your heart to us. It is sad we are both Queen's Guard, but we do not open our hearts to each other. Nostalgic memories of happiness fill your heart. At first you saw the Queen coldly as a foolish girl. At first you thought the Queen was a distasteful, a priestess was a distasteful woman. Since when was it? But you began to feel like the Queen as Your Majesty and the Priestess as Sophia. Durgan, I have a favor to ask of you. Will you come with me? Her Majesty will be fine. The Chief and Colgan are with her. She couldn't even answer where she was going. With no choice, Durgan followed the Priestess. Before I leave, I want to see, wanted to see this view with you. Hmm? I'm going to a small village up north under Her Majesty's order. A hundred or so undead are attacking that village. I've been ordered to purify the undead. A lot of the noblemen are saying to forget about just one village. Darn it! We're getting an image song here. Um, and it's not being picked up. The Majesty's taking it seriously. She said that this is all of Juhan's problem. But the nobles won't let us order the army. So Her Majesty ordered me. Your accompaniment? The priestess shook her head. It must be done in secrecy. I'm the only one going. Facing 100 and dead by oneself. It felt so rash. Durgan felt anger toward the queen for such an order. Durgan asked the priestess. Are you not scared? Durgan, of course I am. But I want to answer her majesty's trust. Trust? Her majesty never orders anything reckless. I gave this order trusting my powers. A light of solid resolution dwelled within the priestess's eyes. This is my promise. I will come home. For her majesty. For me. Because... Because I want to see this view again with you. When the priestess said that, she jumped up. In spite of himself, Durgan called her name. Sophia! Priestess Sophia turned around, surprised. That's the first time you ever called me by my name. It's kind of embarrassing. Sophia was fond of you. Kurgan smiled wryly. I suspected you she was crying, and your majesty quietly reproached me. Kurgan, we need to talk. We fought together many times. I know your capabilities. There is something that is bugging me. 
No one else has noticed, and maybe because I'm a ninja that I noticed. Your style. Isn't it the style of assassination? You sound with the smell of death on you. The smell of the wind that carries death. Who do you plan to use your techniques on? Depending on your answer, I'll... Krogan drew his stirk sword. Kulgan, stop at once. The queen stepped in front of Kulgan. Behind, behind the queen stood Sophia. Kulgan sheathed his sword. I am truly sorry. I have the, but I have the duty of protecting you, your majesty. I must dispose of anyone who is of danger to your majesty. Even if it be, it be a, qu a friend, a queen's guard. Hulgan, what are you saying? Sophia. The queen quietly looked at Colgan and Durgan, bowing on their knees. I believe in you from the bottom of my heart. That's why you've placed your own life in my hands. If you're planning to kill me, then I must have done something incredibly foolish. We do not need such a queen. Put me to the sword. Colgan and Durgan both raised their heads in surprise. You risk your life to protect me. And I shall risk my life on your heart. A life for a life. Majesty. Words from the queen's mouth threw Dol Durgan into confusion. This cannot be. She really is, for she is the queen of Hadarak. Durgan, I believe in you. In your heart, deep within the closed doors of your soul. Exclamation mark. Your Majesty. From then on, you definitely changed. That's why I didn't say anything more. But now I think on it, that time, even if I made Sophia cry, or if Her Majesty rebuked me, if only I had finished you off. Gergen, why did you betray Her Majesty and Sophia? Did you not hold them dearly in your heart? I can feel your feelings from these waves. Then why? Just at that time, a dark, sickening wave enveloped the party. Damn you, Atelier! How dare you reform my puppet, which I raised and brought up? I won't leave it at this. I will resurrect my god by offering you the descendant of Oriana. It, then you, my puppet who betrayed me, everyone shall shed tears of blood. <clears throat> you return to reality slightly disoriented. Jurgen, that was... Gogan's face looked ghastly pale. It was like he swallowed poison. You silently bit your lip and slowly moved away from the crystal. your pardon? Sad and bitter memory. I can feel nostalgia and the transience from the crystal. The memory is shining like a ray of light in the cold darkness, or ray of light in the cold darkness. So this crystal is showing us your memory? If so, you must have lost your memory. When I was fe first met you, you looked like this the was the first time you came to this town. It makes sense if you were hiding something, but I cannot just come to think that you are the type of person who would deceive us. It's obvious that Durgan has lost his memory, and maybe, perhaps, the Queen as well. You saw that didn't, as well, didn't you? A deeply affectionate Queen, the crystal revealed. That is the true form of the Queen the people of Duhan love. I don't, know if the same problem, I don't know if it's the same problem as Durgan's, but it's definite that the Queen we have seen is a completely different person. I hope that the last crystal gives us an answer. Let's go. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee 
uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 